Today we are going to talk about how to get crypto grants for your projects. Uh, I will show you the file, the 100 live grants uh, lists that we prepared together with the Tokenomia Pro team. And we've managed to go through each one of them and make sure that this is actual. You need to go to our website, tokenomia.pro, and then you can go through the blog and go to the article about how to get crypto grants for your project. And here you just need to sign up to our mailing lists in order to get the file in very first email as a response. So basically immediately once you will provide your file, your email like I'm doing here, immediately in a response you will get the email with the link to the file. Then we will go through what grants are looking for, what projects behind the grants are looking for, what are the types of the project grants. Here's the file of our 100 life grants for Web3. As you can see, yeah, there is uh, plenty of them. And when it comes to the structure of the file, what you can do in order to play with it, of course, on Google and Spreadsheets feature, you can just basically go and create your own filter view if, if you want to filter it and play with it. Here what you can see how we structure the file. There is a name, a grant topic, a couple of them if you want to only filter out ones that you are mostly interested in. There is like initial description about what the grant is about. So you can initially just check, is it something relevant for you? Then what's the company or project behind the grant? And as you can see, there is like plenty of them. So there is really a lot to choose in. The status of the grant and there are a couple of statuses like open, feature and close. We are trying to make sure that um, there will be open, there will be only open or uh, future grants here. However, there can be a case where some grant closed recently. So instead of just removing it, we will mark it as closed. Then there is an end date. So either it's some specific deadline or, for example, some, as you can see here, ongoing. Then how much money is available and in what form, because there is also very different approaches across different grants, which sometimes can be surprising. The source of information. So basically there is a direct link for you to just go there and uh, submit your proposal. So we don't need to look around. And then there is also information about the requirements and what kind of conditions you need to meet in order to be applicable for a grant. You need to go to our website, tokenoma.pro, and then you can go through the blog and go to the article about how to get crypto grants for your project. And here you just need to sign up to our mailing lists in order to get the file in very first email as a response. The next point is uh, where to look for grants, types of grants, and how to structure your thinking. The main point is, as you can see, there's 100 grants currently, right? And it's a really painful tasks if you ask me if you just really want to go and check each one of them separately because it just takes time each grant has its own process that in most of the cases it's not so seamless let's call it like that because people behind the grant they need to be able to first of all understand what you are trying to achieve who is behind the project because at the end of the day, they need to decide on proper money allocation. So it's important from this point of view, but also you need to prepare proper information for submitting your grant. You need to go through many questions to, to submit it. So that's why if your strategy, like trying to answer the question, how to get crypto grants for your project, if your strategy will be, okay, I'm just going through all of these 100 projects and I will submit my grant proposals in each one of them. If that's your strategy, this doesn't make any sense. I will tell you right now because you will lose a lot of time and at the end of the day, probably most of the grants for you will be not relevant. So that's not the best way to approach it. So what projects behind the grants are actually looking for? There is this concept of a network flywheel. This is the one from A16Z specifically tailored towards the crypto projects. Because I could, as you can see, there is, there is a token, can be or cannot be, obviously. But <clears throat> there's a vision and protocol. Then the token has a value because there is financial capital behind the token value. Then there is platform functionality. Most of the cases of the grants are related to the whole networks, the whole ecosystems, because this is where this kind of network flywheel effect is most important. This effect is basically pretty simple, which is the more users will use the network when more users will use the network. That's pretty much all of it. Same like back in the days with Facebook, more users were using it because 
other users who are using it. And we have a couple of points to address. So platform functionality is delivered by the production capital. So for example, miners or validator. And then on top of this platform, so we have like technology, we have infrastructure, but then of course we need to have some useful applications in order to deliver utility to the end users. So they will be able to create a community and then the circle will be closed. Meaning that the more human capital in terms of, for example, developers and researchers we have, the more useful applications we have on the platform. Therefore, there is a more utility and more users. For most of the grants, it's pretty much the game about, okay, how we can establish the, the grants program in order to bring the most human capital to our ecosystem so this human capital can bring more useful applications, therefore bringing more utility and at the end of the day, bringing more users. So this is how you would like to look at it when you are trying to understand, okay, what these projects behind the grants are looking for currently. And this is how you want to also reason behind your proposal, how you want to motivate at the end of the day, why your proposal is, is the best fit in some grants programs you will need to be accepted in order to even start in the grants process. So that's the first point. Make sure that your grant proposal is basically relevant for the project that you are submitting to. What types of, uh, of grants do we have? You can pretty much categorize them into four different categories. And the first one will be like application level. Yeah, the first one here. Application level where you can get the grant because of some specific use of API that the application is providing or the SDK. So the example can be one inch protocol or also there, there are balancer grants that are related to the use of their SDKs, which is pretty much something different than the like layer one, layer two and other types of grants. So the use case can be, okay, you have some interesting application. You, you, you maybe have some innovative interface, better user experience on top of the existing SDK of some kind of the protocol, right? So this will be the use case that can match into this type of grants. So we don't need to really do something, let's say, really innovative. Let's call it like that in the form of the backbone technology and infrastructure, but it, it can be pretty much enough to be innovative on the interface level. You, you don't need to invent new protocol or you don't need to invent new mathematical proof on, of some advanced technology, right? This is the point that I wanted to make here, that the grants are not only available for the most hardcore projects from, from the infrastructure perspective. And also, when we are talking about it, there is also an important point related to the fact that you don't need to be really technical here because there are also grants available and you can find them on, on our list that are related to educational resources or marketing activities. So, for example, if you have maybe your own blog, your own YouTube channel, or maybe your own ex-Twitter account, and you are passionate about crypto blockchain industry or you are passionate about some specific ecosystem, about some specific project, there is a chance that this project is having budget for grants related to people creating educational materials about their system. You can plan your whole season in terms of content delivery that uh, will be then subject to the, to the grant you are requesting for, which I think it's pretty important. And it shows that not only technical people here can look for something, right? So that was the, let's say, application level. We have projects related to layer two, layer one, layer zero even, which is pretty much all about what I show you in the network flywheel effect. This is mostly exactly around it, how to make sure we spin up our network flywheel. And the second point regarding the educational materials, okay, how we can make sure that people will basically know about it or how to use it. And with this point, I would like to mention about the fact that this is a big difference uh, between traditional companies like Web2 companies approach, how to build stuff from educational resources to the solutions itself versus how it works in the crypto industry, in the web free world, because here with this grants approach, it's not like in a traditional sector where, okay, let's hire some people right inside the company and 
put these people uh, in the office, tell them what and how they need to achieve. In the crypto world, the approach is different. It's okay, we have some pro- ecosystem, for example, right? We have some project and let's assign the budget for community around the project that will help us in development of this project. And we can either have targeted budget towards some specific initiatives that we want to have, like, for example, typical research or development initiatives, or maybe we want to have just general pool and wait for the community so they will be proactive and have some ideas what we can do, what they can do to strengthen our solution, to make it more innovative to basically address our goals. And if we will give them money from our grant, they will deliver that, right? So this is totally different stuff. And we know many people that actually work like that on the daily basis that their main source of funding are grants. And they are doing really interesting stuff, really innovative stuff on top of these grants. So at the end of the day, you don't need to have this centralized structure. You don't need to have this black box of some people working somewhere that then no one knows about. Everything is open, transparent and really powers innovation. It's faster than the typical approach. That's for sure. So this is this main difference. And so let's imagine, okay, we have this situation. So if you want to apply for grants, you need to understand this. Okay, what's the motivation of the projects and that are giving you grant? Okay, so you know about it. So pretty much it's mostly about the network effect. You understand what types of projects when it comes to grants are available for you in order to submit only to relevant projects for you because there will be lots of time for you if you randomly pick your grants project. You need to understand what are the mechanisms behind the capital location because it's it can be complex and it can take time to understand how does it work. There's like plenty of them. Some of them are more famous than the others. However, it's highly important for you to understand what are the grants mechanisms for capital location in order to understand what you can expect from specific grant in terms of how much money you can expect, how this money will be distributed, when you will get them, what are the conditions, and how to even sometimes start your marketing campaign for getting the grants in order to get the most out of it, which will be also talk about the real world example at the end because that was uh, the pretty much our case. If you want to get the list, you need to go to our website, tokenoia.pro, and then you can go through the blog and go to the article about how to get crypto grants for your project. And here you just need to sign up to our mailing lists in order to get the file in very first email as an response. If you would like to talk with us about the grants, about your idea for grants and about your application, and you would like to get our help in that, also, I'm sending a link to free consultation about that. We'll be happy to discuss your idea and also to point you towards the proper, the proper grants, where you can find them, what should be your strategy and so on. So feel free to schedule a call with us. We'll be happy to help. That will be all for today. Thank you very much. I hope the file will be useful for you. I also invite you to our blog, our free consultation about the grants. And for, thank you very much. See you next time.